Hi guys, we're going to be talking about early Christian sculpturing. Uh, this is for uh, chapter uh, 7 in our textbook. So let's begin. Um, what are our objectives for this lesson is that you should be able to identify the characteristics of early Christian sculpturing. Uh, you should be able to identify the context, that is the stories in each of the works, and be able to identify the medium of each of the works. So let's begin. Sculpture that is uh, clearly Christian from before the time of Constantine is even rarer than the paintings. Uh, what there is consists mainly of sarcophagi, sculpturing, and small statues and reliefs, and many of them all surround the same theme of uh, good shepherd images, just as we see here. So this is known as the good shepherd. And we've heard this in the old, excuse me, in the New Testament, in which. Uh, Jesus says that he is the shepherd and his followers are the flock and so it, it kind of basically becomes the theme uh, and this is very this has very uh, Greek tones to it it has very Roman sculpturing elements to it uh, only being 16 inches or excuse me uh, 19 and three quarters inches in height and a width of 16 inches so this is 19 and three quarters from here to here and from here to here it's 16 inches and oh by the way this is made of marble and um, it's portable so it can be moved from place to place um, there's a remarkable set of small marble figures such as this probably this was made around the third century in Asia Minor and here again depicts the Good Shepherd watching over his flock and carrying it and it's kind of resemble of the of the calf bearer so it looks like looks like calf bearer Uh, of an earlier work that we've seen. Um, because it was found with sculptures depicting Jonah, it is most likely probably from a Christian home. Well, let's move on to the next thing. We, see, we have large workshops that were devoted to carving tomb chests ex, uh, existed in most uh, city centers. The sculptors worked on special orders and also kept a supply of finished sarcophagi carved with subjects suitable for a variety of beliefs. Uh, on the sarcophagus that's found in the Roman Church of Santa Maria Antigua, we have the sarcophagi of natural poses of the figures, the solid modeling of the figures, and this revealing drapery all indicates um, the sculptor's classical roots. Now we would take this work and we would actually divide it into several parts here and we could see this from uh, a pagan point of view and from a Christian point of view. In the center stands a figure with hands raised in an age-old gesture of prayer right here and we could say that you know that's a person praying or it could be an orange figure at uh, one side a bearded man reads a scroll he could be considered uh, a teacher or a philosopher a shepherd bring uh, brings in his sheep well that can also be considered the good shepherd and an old man places his hand on the head of a youth who stands in a river well if we see that, we could also see that there could be baptism as well. And then over here, we could see there are one, two, three sheep right here, which again could tie over to the shepherd. Um, but to the informed Christian, the orant is the Christian soul. The seated man is the teaching Christ, followed by Christ the Good Shepherd and a scene of baptism. So we, we could see this as, as, as the orant, the teaching Christ, the Good Shepherd, baptism, and then over here we have this is Jonah. The sleeping youth is Jonah, obviously resting after his ordeal of being eaten by the whale and then vomited out by the whale after three days in the stomach. And the monster is in the classical form of a dog-headed serpent. 
Well, let's look at another sarcophagi here. This is a, a very important sarcophagi to know. It's been on the AP Art History exam in the past, and this is the sarcophagus of Junius Brassus. Uh, Christians adapted Roman forms for their own needs, especially in monumental stone sarcophagi, such as this elaborately carved one, as imposing as the pagan Roman battle uh, sarcophagus. Junius Brassus was a Roman official who, as the inscri inscription here tells us, right in here, here Here's the inscription. Um, it tells us was newly baptized and died on August 25th, 359, at the age of 42. And here on the front panel, columns and entablatures and gables, all these really great architectural terms, divide the spaces into individual scenes. And we see details of architecture and furniture and foliage suggest this very earthly setting for each scene. Well, in the center of both registers, columns carved with putis producing wine frame the triumphal Christ in the upper register right here. Okay, and uh, and flanking, he appears. Or excuse me, he appears as the teacher philosopher. He's flanked by Saint uh, Saints Peter and Saint Paul, and Christ rests his feet right here. If you see it right there on a, a pagan god. Uh, this is Elias. Uh, he, he is the god of wind and he also represents the cosmos. Um, to Christians, Elias personified the sky so that Christ is meant to be seen as seated in heaven. And uh, he, Christ is giving the Christian law to his disciples, imitating the Hebrew scriptures account of God dispensing the law to Moses. Well, to earliest Christian art, such as the catacomb paintings and on this sarcophagus. So let's take a look at some of the themes. Um, what we have in this particular sarcophagus is an intertwining of Old Testament stories and New Testament stories. Uh, if we look up at the top left right here, um, we have Abraham passes the test of faith. Right here, the story of Abraham as he's sacrificing his son Isaac. Christians saw this story as a sign of God's sacrifice of his son Jesus on the cross. Under the triangular gable on the lower right, the Old Testament story of Daniel in the lion's den right here has been replaced. Originally, Daniel was nude because he was balancing the nude Adam and Eve uh, in the lower left frame on, on the far left. God's tests the faith of Job who provides a model for um, the suffering Christian and then you have next Adam and Eve here they are in this gabled section right here um, and this this set everything in motion the entire Christian story lured by this the serpent they've eaten the forbidden fruit they have become conscious of their nakedness and they're trying to hide themselves um, and this is the fall from grace which will be redeemed by Christ on the upper right side are two scenes from Christ's passion here's his arrest right there um, and his appearance before Pontius Pilate, who is about to wash his hands, symbolizing that he is denied responsibility for Jesus' death. But what's not represented here? The crucifixion. It's, it was rarely, uh, was in early Christian art, and after the death of Jesus, the Apostle Peter is arrested for preaching, and in the last frame, Paul is arrested. Uh, the images appear in the upper central frame are of Paul and Peter, whose martyrdom in Rome uh, represented the continuing power of Christ. Well, are you able to see some of the characteristics of early Christian sculpturing? Uh, are you able to identify the stories in each of these works um, or identify the mediums? Because they're all made of marble. All these works are made of marble. If you can, uh, great. If not, go back and rewatch the video.